In my review, we found out that this thing actually does work, but can it make... Today we're gonna find out. I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY and typically on this channel we remake thrift clothes to make them absolutely amazing. However, today is a follow up of a video I did testing this and this is a handheld sewing machine and I got it off of Amazon for um, $10, $15, no more than that. I did have one before and I'll show you in a minute what happened to that one. This one does have a little bit of an upgrade, which I will share, but you guys wanted to know what can it make? Can it hem pants? Can it hem jeans? Can it patch jeans? Can it sew through leather? Can it sew through paper? Can it make a shirt? Today, I am testing all of those out and I'm gonna share everything with you so that by the end of this video, you'll know what you can make with a handheld sewing machine. All right, if you're at all interested in upcycling your own clothes or watching me transform clothes or sewing machine reviews, definitely hit that subscribe button down below and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. All right, let's do this. All right, so here you see I have a different one than before. I had to order another one because the previous one, I broke a needle and when I tried to change the needle, this screw right here, it would not go back in. Like it would just wouldn't, catch for some reason. So I ordered another one and I'm happy that I did because this one actually came with a charging cord. And if you remember from the previous video, if you haven't watched the previous video where I actually talked about how to use this thing, then you'll know that I almost sold my finger a couple times because this little lock thing was not an eight to me to lock it before doing anything to it. So this way, all I have to do is pull out the plug and it has no batteries in it and once I pull the plug, it won't work. So I don't have to like, yeah, this whole locking mechanism was doing some funny stuff. You can watch it in the other video. So we're back in business and I am going to start off with hemming pants. All right, so I have some pants here that I had from another project. I changed two pairs of these pants, uniform pants into something else. So what if you just had uniform pants, you wanted to make them shorter. So these are actually already hemmed I could go right over just the hem to show you but I'm gonna fold them up again um, typically you wouldn't necessarily do it like this you would undo the original hem but I'm just gonna do it like this to see if we can just do a quick hem on these so the issue with all of these is going to be how far can we get it onto like I guess the throat or the bed of this little sewing machine but you can do a shallow him if you like. I'm going to use white thread so you guys can see everything that I'm doing. And it is just like a little power cord. It has a USB plug, so I happen to have a thing that has USB in it. It didn't come with the brick, what I call a brick, for charging it or powering it, but you know, we all probably have a couple bricks <laughs> laying around. I like to put my needle all the way in and all the way out first before I start. I don't know if that does anything, but that's just like, just what I like to do. Now we're going over this pretty thick section where the seams are, let's see if it'll do it. Maybe I shouldn't have pulled this far. So next time I'm just not gonna pull, I'm just gonna let it do what it does. Okay, it won't go over it with a little bit of a tug. So that would take a little bit of practice doing by hand, but if my thread was matching, it wouldn't be too bad. All right, so. Uh, oh, first of all, see, I almost forgot. Lock it, unplug it. Now this is the key to this whole thing, <laughs> is that you have to lock the stick have to, have to, have to lock the stitch. So you can see we got a little bit of a hiccup, 
right where we went through those seams, but it still holds. And like I said, if it had been some matching thread, it would be just fine. So will it hem pans? Check. All right, so the next thing you guys wanted to know is will it hem jeans? This is a pair of Levi's, so that makes them really thick. So I thought I'd use these because I think these are like the ultimate test. Typically, they say if you want to hem jeans, you're supposed to try to save the actual original hem. So what I'm going to do is just turn these up like this. Well, you won't be able to hem them any further than you can get it on here. So that's the limitation. Let's see, will it do it? And I'll let you know how much you can do. Although you could go ahead and cut, which I'm not gonna do. <laughs> you could go ahead and cut. So like you would fold it up however much you want it to be folded. So like say for instance, you needed five inches off of these. You would go ahead and fold it up, cut away the excess, and then you could go ahead and do this. But for the purposes of this test, we're just gonna do a little bit. Okay, it doesn't really like being real close up to this edge. It's too much, you know, fabric probably. so scared of breaking this needle because it's already giving me trouble like getting it to go no it won't go over it so I'm just gonna lift and just go over it myself if I can. still be an accident prone. All right, let's flip these over. So the bottom line is it won't go over the seams, but there you go. I don't know if this is a yes or no, you guys be the judge. This is just a question mark. <laughs> All right, so next up, someone asks, will it patch jeans? So typically when you have jeans, the hole that you wanna patch is pretty centrally located on the jean. So this one in particular is in the crotch. You can see this is the top of the jeans, the waistband, the zipper, and that is right dead in the crotch. And then typically you would get them like down the thighs or on the knee. The problem with trying to use this <laughs> to patch this is typically you have a piece of denim and you could put it on top and then stitch, 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 or you could put it underneath and then just stitch around it. The problem is how are you going to get to it? And that's the problem pretty much on any sewing machine, but on my like long arm sewing machines or just even a regular sewing machine, I would go through here, but there is absolutely no way that I can get this through there. So the only way possible to try to do this would be to turn it inside out and just to try to stitch it back together. Now the problem with that is that this is a thick stitch and we already saw that this will not go through this thick denim. It'll go through two layers max. So yeah, this is a no. So I hope you guys can see the logic of that. Even on the knee, if you had a patch on the knee, how would you get the sewing machine to it? You have to open up the leg to get to there, even still, it would still be hard. And then you have to stitch that back. And like we said, on multiple layers, it doesn't like it. So I think that this one is gonna have to be a no. 
Okay, next up, you guys want to know if it'll make curtains. So of course, you know, I'm not going to go ahead and do like a full curtain, but I will take this just thin cotton type material and I will make a mini set of curtains that will be operable and the same steps that you would to make a curtain. Now, we can already see from the beginning when I tried to hem those pants, that it's very important to have your seams kind of set because when you're working on a regular sewing machine, it presses down your seams and goes through, keeps everything pretty flat. This, you don't have that luxury. So you want those seams kind of set in before you start. We are using white thread, so this is not going to look clean at all, but it will allow you to see how maybe quick and dirty this is. You'll get a real, a very real assessment of whether this can be an option for you for this for these type of projects. Now, I don't want to start on the edge because I have to kind of um, guide this through. So I want to start in just a little bit. We're gonna see if I can stay in line. That's what I'm concerned about. Hmm. Hmm. All right, now we gotta set that stitch, otherwise it will go away. As you can see, it's not too bad, but you saw that you saw that method, right? You know, that's an expert method. <laughs> but look, so this is what will be on the outside. So I did that wrong. So you have to make sure when you're working with a chain stitch that you're sewing on the outside. But if this were black, it wouldn't it wouldn't be horrible. But I'm gonna try to do it on the other side. I'm gonna try to do it from the inside and see if I can. Mmm, it skipped some steps. Oh. So let's look at this. Oh, see, this is what I'm concerned about. That's what I was concerned about. If you can't sew it from the inside, then maybe you'll get off. All right, let's sew the top and the bottom. We're gonna start off with the hem. And I am gonna do this from the inside. No. Oh, danger, Will Robinson. I guess that's my movie quote for today. Let me know what it's from. Is that a movie or a show? That's a movie. Yeah. All right, just so you know, it does not like going through, I think, what is this? Three, six layers of cotton. Okay, so that's the outside of the curtain. All right, here's an actual curtain rod. It's a spring, te spring tension rod. Let's see if it's big enough to go through. So, Will it do a curtain? I think the answer is a basic one, yes. <laughs> All right, next up you guys wanted to know, does it sew through leather? Here is a piece of leather. This is real, genuine leather that was cut from a garment that I thrifted. Let's see, let's sew on the suede side and then sew on the leather side and see if it'll do it. Hmm. This is not looking promising. Hmm. Surprise the heck out of me. But look, when I'm doing my hands, so it just means the power is stronger than just this little hand wheel. All right, well, that's what we get. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the thread out so we can sew it on the other side. The reason I am differentiating between the suede side and the leather side is because the leather is tacky and it doesn't 
on the sewing machine, it can give it some trouble. Oh, I forgot to lock it. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Like this is not, this is obviously not the option for me because for some reason, I cannot remember to lock this machine. Let's do it. That's not, not what we wanna see at all. So, like I said, it was tacky and I had to pull it through and it did not like that. As a matter of fact, I just hope I didn't mess up the whole thing. Cause you know, like sometimes these things are finicky. Once they're off, they're just off. And that's, yeah, started off good, but we got a lot of missed stitches in there. So leather, it's a yes. Sway, yes. Leather, no. All right, what about paper? Some of you asked me about paper. I don't have like that fancy paper that you guys need to sew through. All I have is uh, copy paper, but I'll try it just the same. Um, it may not, you know, cause I know the paper you guys are talking about is more like papyrus. Is that how you say it? You know, more paper that is more like fabric, but we're gonna go through this anyway and see what it does. We are white on white, but you know, we're gonna try it. If you were trying to buy something and you wanted to get in there, that's not possible. So you would have to, you know, do it this way. So that's the way we're gonna do it. All right. Let's do this. Book stitching does have this um, chain stitch on it. I see it a lot on journals and stuff like that. So that's cool. And it does go through paper. Let's see if it'll open up and yeah. So paper, yes. All right, so next up, you guys asked me if it can go through satin. I don't have any satin or any silk that I want to test this on, at least no scraps. But I do have this dress that I thrifted that I probably will turn into something else. And it is the lightest material that I could possibly find. And the point of this is will it eat it up? or will it actually sew through? So I'm just gonna fold it over and we're gonna sew a little bit through this and see if it's going to sew it or if it's going to eat it up. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, it didn't catch at all. Like. Maybe user error, maybe fabric. So let me just see if we going crazy. If, if it'll go through the denim. All right, here we go, let's try it. No, it did just fine, just fine. Hmm. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. One thing I know is this fabric is hard to get underneath here. All right. All right, that's not a fluke. It does not like this fabric at all. I don't know why. I can't even begin to try to tell you why. For satin and silk, very light fabrics, I would say it's a no. All right, next up is a buttonhole. And I know you guys are thinking like, oh my gosh, like why would you even entertain that? The reason is because not everybody knows how a buttonhole is created. A buttonhole is actually 
a zigzag stitch and any i know it, you can't like these small ones from men's dress shirts they're kind of hard to see um that it is actually a zigzag stitch it is a zigzag stitch and it starts off at the top and then it goes to one side zigging and zagging to the other side and then comes back up if you have an all-in-one buttonhole so that's how it's made any sewing machine no matter how cheap or expensive it is if it doesn't do a zigzag stitch then it most likely innately will not do a buttonhole unless you add some type of attachment or some you know uh special thing so what we're going to do is we are going to see if we can simu simulate a buttonhole and i'll let you guys i'll let you guys be the judge of how this is going to turn out go back the other direction we can do this side all right <laughs> So if we were able to get these straight and go over it several times, maybe we could get something that would work as a buttonhole. But this one is gonna be a no for me. All right, lastly, and certainly not least, will it make a shirt? I think that this was the highest one or the one you guys asked me the most outside of him and pants. So I chose to do a t-shirt because it's just common and the fabric is kind of thin. So this is obviously a mini t-shirt because, you know, just for time's sake. And I cut this from an actual t-shirt, just freehanded it. So, you know, it may or may not be great at the end, but it will show you if a handheld uh, sewing machine can make a t-shirt. Let's find out. Hmm. It's not like a nice t-shirt material. Yes, it is not like a nice t-shirt material. We're gonna have to do deeper. All right, so that lets us know it does not, it does not like to be on the edge of, oh, don't take my, it took the same out. Oh! Now I'm scared, honestly. Skipped half the uh, stitches. I am over it. All right, let's try the other side. It's barely sewn together because you can't get close to the edge without it eating it up. I didn't even think to test t-shirt material specifically, but I think that that should have been a test and maybe we will do a sleeveless shirt. <laughs> we'll do a sleeveless shirt. How about that? <laughs> you know 
What? No, no, my patience is not. It's not. It's not here for stuff like this. It's not. Look, I'm getting rough with it. So that's how much of the sleeve. <laughs> That's how much of the sleeve we got on. Let's take that off. All right. Hey, for just for me trying this, you guys, please hit that subscribe button. Just, just for all of this effort, please just go ahead and hit it. this point it's just saying like you know basically screw you and I'm hearing it loud and clear <laughs> well if you like busting out of your seams and having no sleeves and having raw edges then this is for you <laughs> but on a serious note i i'm glad we did this because i didn't even think to test t-shirt it does not like t-shirt material i think you would do better doing like a dress shirt material with this and then maybe you could actually make something like a, a, a an upcycle with a dress shirt but other than that i'll say not a t-shirt but maybe this shirt that I'm showing you now. So that's not a yes or no. It's just, it's about the material and it's about the method. So um, yeah, I would not make a whole shirt from scratch unless you are super, super, super patient and you are using a material more like a, a cotton, something that does not have stretch. This thing does not like stretch. It does not like gentle materials. So yeah, there you go. So of course, I was talking about this top right here. If you're interested, of course, I will put a link in the description box below as well as other tutorials that I think are perfect for the handheld sewing machine. So definitely check those out. And you guys let me know, can you see yourself using a handheld sewing machine? I know for a lot of you guys that watch my videos normally, you're gonna be like, absolutely not. But remember, everybody has to start somewhere and everybody's budget is not the same. So I like to do these videos because it considers a lot of wider range of people so let me know are you interested in getting this and what are you interested in sewing with it put it in the description box below and definitely subscribe if you haven't what are you waiting for subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing and i have a whole host of other videos for you to watch right here so definitely check those out and i will see you in the next one bye